Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our daily get-together live on Facebook at 10.30 in the morning every single day of the week where we get together to exchange headlines, news, stories, tips, suggestions, everything that we can to make our lives uh, here in Puerto Vallarta more wonderful as an English-speaking community. As you know, it is a pleasure to be here every single morning, and especially on mornings like today. Today it's raining outside. Today it's raining. The skies are gray. And I tell you, whenever I wake up on a day like today, uh, when I look out the window and I see that it's raining, all I want to do is stay home, chill, drink some coffee, have some nice music playing in the background, and be productive. Even after the fact that the pandemic has kept us home doing pretty much that for the last five to six months. I still love being home and just chilling. And um, all of a sudden I find myself wondering, what kind of music would you like to be listening to if you were to have a stay at home day to be the soundtrack of your day? If you have any comments to that effect, feel free to share them with me. I'm just curious about it. I woke up thinking about box preludes for the piano in box music is always something that I find very soothing, but sometimes I gravitate to other things. But enough about that. It is, um, oh, oh, hold on just a second. Never mind. Thank you very much for pointing that out to me. <clears throat> Give me one second. Give me one second. Now. Switch microphones. That's much better. My bad. I had disconnected my um, good microphone, this guy, because I needed to connect something else. But I hope the sound is slightly better. And um, I'm seeing all kinds of awesome music related comments from regulars. Uh, but before we go there, let me remind you that if you are new to these broadcasts, we welcome you to join us every day with your thoughts, your comments, your ideas. And for us to be able to welcome you properly, we love it when um, you write the word new in your comments so that we can give you a proper welcome. Such is the case <clears throat> of Alan from Dallas, who's joining us for the first time. Alan, welcome to Coffee and Headlines. Monday through Saturday, we have a combination of news and, uh, and just leisurely stuff. And then on Sunday, we throw caution to the wind and we just go crazy. We don't talk about news. Sundays are Sunday fun day, and they're usually pretty irreverent. So keep your children at bay. It is great to see um, familiar faces from all over the place. Michal got it down. Thank God it's Friday. Absolutely. Uh, Karen chimes in with a similar feeling. Uh, Raymond is enjoying the rain just nearby. Hello, neighbor. Um, Kelsey is in Maryland. Sheila's in Vancouver. Um, Colorado Springs, Michael is in Colorado Springs. How fun it is that, you know, for half an hour, 40 minutes, we can be in many different places and we can be connected in real time. Sometimes it really is worth taking a step back and thinking about the wonderful technology that makes this happen. Good morning, Thomas. <clears throat> it's great to see you all. And uh, as always, if you have any um, specific comments or suggestions that you wish to share 
Of course, Michael, I'm totally with you. Oh my God, I can't wait to meet you because you sound like a really fun guy and you're going to come to Puerto Vallarta and you're a singer and I'm a musician and I just love it when I learn that talented people, and you better be talented, uh, <laughs> talented people choose to move to our city because they nurture um, our cultural environment, which I think is super, super awesome. Um, anyway, I was saying, if you have comments or questions that you want to really address during the broadcast or that are particularly important, please add a letter Q at the beginning of them so that we can get to them um, during the broadcast. Today, we're going to have all kinds of news about all the public laundering of Mexican corruption that has started <clears throat> going on thanks to the incarceration of the former Pemex director. and. Uh, and uh, that we also have some news about, oh my God, Lady Tacos de Canasta. I need to explain Lady Tacos de Canasta because this made national headlines. Um, Hugo lopez Gatel gives us another morsel of knowledge for the vaccine. Um, somebody asked me to talk about chocolate cars in Mexico. What are chocolate cars in Mexico? I'll give you a hint. They're not edible. And, um, and just a couple of other things that we want to talk about this morning. So... <clears throat> oh, that's nice, Michael. Thank you very much. I don't even remember when you guys get here. But what I love about Michael um, and, and other folks like Michael is that they he and his partner, If please correct me if I don't get this right, Michael, he and his partner, and I know this from comments that are left here on Coffee and Headlines, um, he and his Michael, hi, Tricia, um, Michael and his partner are planning to move to Puerto Vallarta. So what they're doing is they're spending time in local communities. Well, I don't know if they're spending time in other local communities, but they're spending time here at Coffee and Headlines uh, just to get to know a little bit about how we feel and how we think and who we are. And I am sure that in the process of doing that, they're meeting people, they're making connections, they're becoming locals even before they are here. And I just think that's awesome. If this project can serve as that kind of, uh, of a vehicle for connection with our community, then I'm sleeping well every single night because that is what it's all about. It's all about building great communities and um, and um, and I'm rambling. Uh, yes, this is very sad to, with what happened with Lady Tacos de Canasta. Um, we have to talk about her and we're going to talk about her at length. But first, let's get some nasty news out of the way before we can get into Lady Tacos de Canasta because she is truly important and you'll want to know why in just a little while. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, all these laundering, all these dirty clothes are starting to come out uh, given the fact that um, high-ranking politicians in Mexico are now being brought to justice. And one of those high-ranking politicians turned out to be the brother of our president, the brother of President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, apparently, well, not apparently, clearly, was filmed, was caught on video uh, back in, I believe it was 2015, 2016, accepting money in a paper bag, uh, allegedly to provide support for the political party that the president belongs to, that would be the Morena party. Um, apparently, President Lopez Obrador has known about this um, for just about a week or so, and his uh, his posture about his own brother is let them be brought in for questioning. Um, you know, he's pretty much implied that you may be my brother, but, you know, you're not above the law. So this is yet another one of those headlines that we are going to um, be seeing a lot of uh, in the near future. Um, I will try to make some sense of them as much as I can. I am not an expert in politics, but this stuff is important to me. And it is important to you, I am sure, because you're curious English-speaking locals. Uh, speaking of curious, how curious that former Mexican president Enrique Peña Nieto, who was quite handsome, or and apparently, well, he must be still quite handsome, although I don't know. When I looked at Bill Clinton the other day, um, age has not been very kind to him. But anyway, I digress. Um, Enrique Peña Nieto, former president of Mexico, paid... 
$1.6 million to improve his image. That is an expensive beauty makeover, let me tell you. Um, I could buy a house. I could get my car out of <laughs> its, its coma with that kind of money and then buy cars for everybody in my building. Anyhow, uh, this is part of an, all these statements that are coming to light now that Emilio Lozoya, uh, former president of Pemex, is, is spilling his beans. And um, what did Peña Nieto get with a beauty makeover that cost $1.6 million? I suppose we will find out in the near future as all these details continue to surface. I am ready for the Netflix series, let me tell you. Never in the history of Mexico have we had such a, an open investigation into corruption and bribes going on at such high levels of government in our country. So <clears throat> the plot thickens, that's for sure. And speaking of plot thickens, all of a sudden something came to mind and this has nothing to do with Mexico, nothing to do with um, the uh, with Puerto Vallarta. But all of a sudden, I put A and B together and realized that Joe Biden and Donald Trump are going to go on television to debate one another. And that's going to be a circus. That's going to be a circus. Anyway, Back to the headlines. Uh, Hugo Lopez Gatel provides yet another morsel of knowledge that is useful as we look at the possibility of all these vaccines coming to us. Hugo Lopez Gatel says that unless we reach 75% immunity, COVID 19 will come back. So, what this means to me, and I read through the paper, uh, through the article, is that he pretty much said that. Unless 75% of the population gets immunity through a vaccine, uh, we can expect to see more, um, more COVID-19 in the future. So let us hope that this vaccine continues to be developed. Let us hope that um, when the vaccine becomes available, uh, it is distributed as, wide, it, as widely as possible as the government has promised. Also in the news uh, came this uh, report slash complaint from Noticias PV saying that um, locals at Unirse are wearing face masks but at, are not respecting di safe distance between one another. Unirse is one of the government buildings where we have to um, sometimes uh, process paperwork like renew driver's license or pay this or pay that and so forth and so on. And it is one of those... Um, uh, chores that we all hate to get involved in simply because it means that we have to go and wait in line and so forth and so on. So everything that is going to, everything that is being um, handled at this building is something that if you have to go to Unirse to do paperwork, just be mindful of the fact that people may not be as respectful of each other's distance. You know, what I try to do is I just sort of, you know, turn around and give people the look. <laughs> that you're stepping onto my my personal space. Look, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oftentimes, when I find myself in situations like that at the supermarket, I just sort of shiver and hope that everything's going to be okay. But there's only so much we can do. Uh, let me stop for a second um, to take a look at your initial questions because we're changing topics here. Let me see. <clears throat> Boom, boom, bam, 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 bam. I saw some questions about ukule, uku, uk, oh gosh, ukuleles, ukuleles, ukuleles. I think it's ukuleles. If not, I will ta start taking lessons for the instrument. Uh, lots of happy wishes for Friday. Thank you very much. Lots of great comments on music. Otmar Liebert uh, is a great suggestion. Um, Piano music, you're giving me great ideas. Oh, French Cafe on Spotify. Thank you very much for all these great suggestions. I'm going to try them all today because for the most part, I have to stay home and continue doing some work. Uh, let's see. Oh, I swear I saw a question about a ukulele band. Um, in the ah, here we go. David asks, in the past, I have seen a ukulele group of about 15 or 20 people at a restaurant practicing and playing on the beach. How fun. I never heard about this, but Trisha Lyman, hello, Trisha, very quickly um, answers this. 
Um, and yes, I kept, I, I saw this bit of news yesterday. I saw it. Um, boom, 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 boom. Peña Nieto did get a fresh new girlfriend, new arm candy to make him look better. No, I actually think, Paul, that the whole beauty makeover thing happened before he um, became president. Uh, this was actually in the news item. It said that this was when he was still the governor of the state of Mexico. Uh, I believe the governor of the state of Mexico. The whole Peña Nieto presidency was such a fabrication. And we can talk about that. Uh, um, we can talk about that at length at some point. Angelica Vargas asks, where is the investigation coming from? I assume you're talking about some of these police uh, these politician statements that I just made. Angelica, all these statements come from news headlines that I pick up every morning and that I share after every show as show notes. If you want to go ahead and read them at your leisure, just um, wait until the end of the show and I upload all the links and that will have the answer to your question. Um, oh, how fun. Trisha, please let us know whenever this happens again because it sounds like a blast. Um, did I see the photograph of Lopez Gatel without a face mask on a flight? I did not. Shameful, shameful, just horrible. Uh, Susan would not be too quick to jump on the vaccine bandwagon. Fair enough. Um, does anyone know where to buy the national lottery tickets? You know, I think I have seen them at a paper magazine newsstand that is right at the corner of Teatro Vallarta, but I'm not entirely certain. Um, I don't see them very frequently. Um, Heather Wilson chimes in that they um, jam weekly at Fidencios. Actually, um, as as long as we uh, have Tricia on board, maybe Tricia, you can tell us where we can uh, enjoy the ukulele band whenever they're playing again. Um, back to the headlines. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this. This has to do with the tourism tianguis and let me explain the tourism tianguis in case you don't know once a year somewhere in the country there is this huge <clears throat> tourism tianguis or marketplace where the whole offer of tourism destinations available in mexico gets presented to travel agencies wholesalers hotels airlines travel promoters from around the world. And this is a very important national event. In fact, it's the most important national event to promote Mexico as a tourism destination. It was expected to take place back in March, but it uh, had to be canceled due to COVID-19. And now through this headline, we find out that it will be completely digital in nature this year and it'll take place in the near future it's going to take place on the 23rd and 24th of september and of course jalisco and nayarit will be present there um, over 740 buyers have already confirmed their uh their involvement and they come from 30 different countries like singapore jordania india russia ukraine uh ukraine ukraine <laughs> Ukraine, Jordania. I'm making up Spanglish names for countries because I'm going really fast. Let me try that again. Singapore, Jordan, India, Russia, the, the Ukraine, uh, Switzerland, and so forth and so on. There are uh, travel agents from all these countries that are involved um, in being present in, in this event. Now, why is this important to us? It is important to us because I thought you would want to know how it is that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we see these tours in Mexico or in Puerto Vallarta, rather, that come from unexpected countries. A lot of it has to do because while we're not knowing it or not paying attention to it, there are these enormous efforts made by our government to bring people to Puerto Vallarta and the rest of Mexico from all kinds of places. So it doesn't affect us directly, of course, but for those of us or those of you that are involved with working with tourists or visitors on a regular basis, this is part of the effort that is put into place. Uh, <clears throat> moving right along, I am not perfect and sometimes I misplace 
correspondence. And I know, I didn't imagine this, I know somebody got in touch with me a couple of days ago asking about chocolate cars. So if you are here, chocolate car person, please raise your hand because I'm gonna tell you about chocolate cars. Um, uh, bum, 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 babble. Okay, I'll look at your comments in a second. Anyhow, somebody was asking about bringing a chocolate car into Mexico and chocolate cars are not edible figurines. In Mexico, we call chocolate cars, uh, we refer to vehicles that are brought into Mexico, either legally or illegally, that were not manufactured here or were never available in Mexico. Uh, think about it as a brand of vehicle that is not available here and you decide to bring your car with you or you decide to buy a chocolate car in Mexico. Chocolate cars have advantages and disadvantages. First of all, you know, a lot of people like chocolate cars um, because they are inexpensive. Uh, sometimes if chocolate cars come from the United States, they may have mandatory security features that are not required in Mexico. Um, but then the downside of having a chocolate car is that if you buy it in Mexico, it will be less expensive, but you will not know if it was brought in legally or illegally if you buy a chocolate car um, and it breaks down, you will not be able to get it repaired in Mexico because, again, we're talking about cars that were not manufactured here. So it's not like you can just walk into a dealership and get a spare part for it. Um, and if you decide to move to Mexico, for example, if you relocate here and you decide to bring your car and it is a car that cannot be serviced locally, ergo, it is a chocolate car, then this could be um, this could be uh, a problem. So why would people choose to bring chocolate cars or buy a chocolate car is a mystery to me. And I hope I've addressed this properly uh, to chocolate car person. Again, I'm sorry I misplaced your 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 email message and I would have loved to address you by name and um, and I will maybe not sleep very well tonight because I don't know where your email message went. So I hope you're watching. Um, let me see. That is a long question, Gary. Uh, let me very quickly tell you that because it's very long, I cannot even bring it onto my screen because it will, oh, it does fit. Let me take a look at this when I get done with the show, Gary, so that, um, I can give it all the necessary attention if I may. Uh, bum 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 heard there's a new internet provider besides Telmex and Easy. I have not heard about this, but I would be curious about it, of course, if it is it is a better deal. I personally have been a Telmex customer forever, and I'm just used to it, and I've never had a problem with it. Well, there's occasional times in which Telmex decides to get a little silly. Anyhow, um, uh, these are our formal bit of news. Let us switch to the weather and other things. Well, for a change, uh, carrot weather is not getting it right because I looked out my window and it is raining. And usually when it's raining, according to carrot weather, it rains on the computer screen, but not today. It is 27 degrees Celsius, feels like 31, 81 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a 7% chance of precipitation and we have an 83% humidity right now. Uh, the weather forecast tells us that it's going to continue to rain until evening. Let us think that these are the remnants of Hurricane Genevieve. Uh, tomorrow we will have rain in the evening and overnight. Um, and on Sunday we can expect to also have rain in the evening and overnight. So there you have it. Um, that is our weather forecast for today. Now I have to tell you about an important incident that anniversary that was celebrated yesterday and I totally forgot about it. Why would I forget about this? Uh, because it's not that important when you put it in perspective. But you may want to know that 50 years ago yesterday, former U.S. President Richard Nixon came to Puerto Vallarta and he had a meeting with the Mexican president at the time with uh, President Diaz Ordaz. 
And this is something that was celebrated very much so at the time. Of course, uh, the New York Times had a, a, a heading of it. And um, I know that I've researched at some point that what they talked about, honestly, I don't remember. But the meeting took place at um, the Hotel San Marino, that is in Emiliano Zapata. And the president stayed at a house that is in Conchas Chinas. So it is so funny because they, they met here and uh, here's a whole account on the flight and, and, and how they got here and so forth and so on. And the reason I think it's funny be is because, you know, they just had a meeting here, but there is a house in Conchas Chinas that still has a plaque that says, you know, President Nixon stayed here. And Hotel San Marino used to have a plaque that said we had this illustrious meeting here. And for many years, while I was still working at Vallara Lifestyles, I remember seeing in the social section of the newspaper how the, 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 the fabulous local ladies, the VIP ladies, would get together every year to reminisce on the, the meeting that took place and i often wondered if these ladies would and of course you know the papers would go and take their photographs getting together to commemorate the thing and i often wondered whether these ladies would even know what the meeting was about and if they only wanted to um be photographed in the paper i just thought it was funny i continue to think that this for better or worse is one of those things that's going to become like what's going to happen to the night of the iguana give it give it another couple of uh generations and for better or worse you're going to be able to ask people around the street do you know who burton or taylor went and people will not remember hopefully they will maybe i'm just being a little pessimistic about that anyhow moving on to other headlines um lady tacos de canasta oh my god you we usually associate lord and lady names to dreadful with dreadful people, okay? Well, this is one of the notable exceptions. Lady Tacos de Canasta. Well, first of all, let me explain Tacos de Canasta in case you still haven't discovered them. Tacos de Canasta are a very specific kind of tacos that you can buy, and they're called Tacos de Canasta because they began being distributed in baskets. Uh, there's a whole story behind them, and uh, they originate from Mexico City and vicinity, in which people would prepare these tacos early in the morning and fill them with all kinds of wonderful fillings. And to keep them warm, they would be covered, slathered in hot oil, and then bundled in a plastic bag, and then bundled in a piece of fabric so that they would stay warm during the day. So basket taco salespeople would go out on the street with their baskets. And because the tacos were sealed, they would stay warm for many, many hours. To date, they are still sold. They're still sold here in Puerto Vallarta. In fact, if you go to, uh, oh gosh, what is it called now? Uh, Soriana. Soriana. If you go to Soriana in Plaza Caracol, there is a tacos de canasta outlet right as you exit the supermarket. And they're really yummy. There are a couple of other outlets. But in large places like Mexico City, they are still sold out and about. Tacos de Canasta are yummy because they're usually filled with, with chicken or pork rind or beans or all kinds of specific types of fillings. So I hope you are um, familiar enough with them. So that would be Tacos de Canasta. Lady Tacos de Canasta is this legendary character that sells Tacos de Canasta, and there she is. And apparently, she and she does this with her bicycle. She rides her bicycle. She has her big basket of tacos uh, strapped onto her bicycle, and she was doing her thing in Mexico City. Um, uh, oh, let me address this question very quickly. Uh, Actually, it's it's funnier than that, Bob. Not called wet tacos. They're called sweaty tacos. And I've seen at least one or two 
parodies from a salesperson trying to sell tacos, sweaty tacos. And if you say, oh, yeah, give me an order of two. And they go under their armpit to remove the tacos from there. So they're called sweaty tacos, not so much wet tacos, but they're so delicious. They're really wonderful. Anyhow, Lady Tacos de Canasta was doing her thing, selling her tacos. And for whatever reason, that is not clear to me. She was accosted, accosted. She was um, intervened policemen stopped her and there was a fight and uh thank you very much kateri i'm getting uh, kateri i'm getting to that um she was um she was attacked by policemen and she was then defended by um by the people that were walking by and apparently it was a violation i, I don't know exactly who was right or wrong but mexico city has decided the government of mexico city has decided to pay for her tacos because her tacos, poor thing, ended up on the floor and the whole thing was captured on video. I tell you, you cannot get, get anywhere anymore without being captured on video. Now, Lady Tacos de Canasta is famous or important for two very specific reasons. First of all, she is a mushe. And a mushe in Zapotec culture, okay, let me backtrack because this may not make much sense to you. One of the indigenous cultures in the state of Oaxaca is the Zapotec. Um, and for the Zapotec, the Mushes, the, the Mushe is a person assigned a male, assigned male at birth who dresses and behaves in, in ways otherwise associated with women. Uh, they're even seen as a third gender. So this is like the one part or the one place in Mexico where men that dress and behave as women are are accepted socially and there is a whole subculture about mushes that i would love to explore at some point um anyhow i'm so glad that many of you are familiar with taco chronicles because i've seen at least a couple of people mentioning it to have a better appreciation of a mushes b tacos de canasta and c Lady Tacos de Canasta, this particular uh, episode of Netflix's Tacos uh, mini series, uh, the Taco Chronicles, is something that I absolutely recommend. And I will share the, the link to this particular episode so that you can enjoy it at your leisure. Uh, of course, you want a Taco de Canasta, uh, Guinevere. I want like 12 right now just from having this conversation. Uh, let me see what other comments you have shared. David says, we saw two Teslas in PV last week. Are you seeing Teslas too? I haven't seen Teslas, but uh, <clears throat> I wonder if there is a Tesla dealership. Otherwise, they're probably chocolate cars or maybe they're just visiting. Um Claudia chimes in that Total Play is a new internet company. I'm not familiar with it. If somebody is and you've had good or bad experiences with um, with them, it would be interesting to learn more about this. Uh, uh, Pilar chimes in on the exhibition on an exhibition uh, that they did. Uh, about the Nixon, Johnson, and JFK archives about their trips to Mexico. If there, if this is something that can be enjoyed online, Pilar, please feel free to share a URL with us so that we can share it with everybody. Angelica Vargas chimes in. How interesting about that culture! I never knew that they there were there was a mushe uh, uh, that was actually featured in the cover of Vogue magazine, and it was a beautiful man dressed as a woman, of course. Um, so it is um, it is very much something that is a peculiarity of Mexico. Going back to headlines, Facebook, I don't know about you, but Facebook's classic look dies in September. Uh, several months ago, I got this notice from Facebook saying, uh, we're going to give you the brand new Facebook. It's simpler to use. And I switched to it and I hated it. And I went back to the old version. And now I find that the traditional version of Facebook is going to be deprecated 
uh, this coming month. So expect Facebook to look slightly different if you haven't made the switch. If you've already made the switch, then good for you. But Facebook will start looking very weird and very different to some of us uh, in the weeks to come. So just be ready for that. And uh, of course, the last headline that I have to share for you comes from New York Times, seven things to do this weekend. As always, New York Times shows us all kinds of different uh, interesting options to consider that I'll be happy to share with you. Um, let me see. There are charging stations for Teslas in Puerto Vallarta. Who knew? Who knew? Um, with you on your well-deserved holiday, do we just sign up in as usual? Great question, Joe. Let me explain how this is going to go. Because I'm going to be doing pre-recorded segments I am going to upload videos and I'm going to set them as what Facebook calls a premiere. And they're going to be scheduled to premiere at the usual time in which we get together. So tomorrow will be the first, uh, tomorrow I will have uh, Tuesday's episode ready. So tomorrow I will, sh I will upload it to Facebook and set it to be ready to play exactly at 10.30 in the morning on Tuesday. So what you want to do is just go into the Coffee and Headlines Facebook page, um, and you will find the content there. And I will explain this. I've never actually done this. I've never actually scheduled a video. So tomorrow when I schedule the video and I get the specific link for the video, I'll put it in the show notes, and I will continue to put um, those links in the show notes between now and when I go on vacation. And um, that way we'll keep each other company and I will not miss you that much. I will at least know that I did something wonderful so that we can keep each other company. Um, let's see. Ba -da -ba -ba. Oh, Guinevere wants to be the holiday host. Only if you show up with that beautiful colored hair. I love your hair, Guinevere. Love it, love it, love it. What about Monday? Monday, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. And right after I finish Monday, we're going to to hop into a car and go to San Sebastián del Oeste and it will be absolutely wonderful and I will bring you with me and bring back all kinds of stories and videos and photos to share. The weekend is upon us. I hope you will have a really awesome weekend. I hope you were entertained and amused and otherwise inspired by some of the things that we talked about today. I don't think I'm missing anything other than thanking you as always for your company, your questions and your insight. Um, I hope this weekend is wonderful and cheerful for you. If you have to be out and about, remember to wear your face mask and keep distance between you and people around you. And um, Lisa asks, how long is my vacation? I'm just going for a couple of days. I will be back broadcasting on Thursday. So Tuesday and Wednesday will be pre-recorded. Thursday, I will come back with great stories of San Sebastian and other things. I will be keeping an eye on the news up there. So I will have a live show again. Um, on Thursday morning. But there's still a few days to go between now and then. Tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow, surprise beach outing that you asked for. If you remember just a few days ago, you asked for a video of a very specific beach. Surprise, surprise. I may be, may be going to that beach tomorrow afternoon. Anyhow, this is it for today. I hope you'll stay happy, stay calm, stay inspired, uh, stay rainy, play some wonderful soothing music for the rest of the day. Stay kind and stay in touch. Have a great day.